Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Katya. Today I have a stretch routine for cyclists. So whenever you've been out on your bike, um, this is a good routine to do after you've been cycling or maybe even the next day just to help you loosen up. We're going to focus first on loosening up the top half of the body as when you're cycling you're sort of in a static position the whole time and then we're going to stretch at our legs as well so that our legs whilst they're getting stronger when you're cycling we keep them flexible so that we you know don't get tight in our backs as well so let's begin just grab your mat and you just need yourself and then we can start So we'll start with our cat stretch. Come onto your hands and knees. Place your hands under your shoulders. Stretch your fingers out nice and long. And your knees underneath your hips. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Look out forwards, lift up your tailbone. And exhale, round in your spine. Good. And I'd like you to maybe close your eyes. So you can just when you start to feel what's going on in your body, how's it doing, where's it feeling tight and maybe stiff a little bit, where can you loosen it up. Maybe you can direct your breath into those areas and imagine that the breath would flow into any tight spots and help these areas to release, loosen up. Just a couple more. You can go at your own time if you want to go a little faster or a little slower. Just make it feel really good for your back. And then lengthen into a neutral position. From here, we're going to take a big step with one hand all the way forwards towards the corner of the mat. And then your other hand. Now you can have your hands flat or you might stay up on your fingertips. And then come down into this stretch called puppy dog or puppy stretch. See if you can release your head between your arms. Now for some of us the head will be floating just off the ground. For some of us the head might actually touch down. Make sure it feels good on your shoulders. Can you press your hands or your fingertips down into the mat so that your arms are staying really nice and active? Finding that beautiful length all the way from your wrists to your shoulders, through your armpits, up to your waist. Breathing here. Beautiful. And then walk your hands back in. Let's open our knees slightly wider, toes together. Inhale, take your right arm up to the sky. Exhale, thread the needle stretch. Right arm comes under. Bend your left arm so your head might be able to come all the way down. Inhale, press yourself up, reach your arm up. Exhale, thread your right arm under. Let's do one more. Inhale, press up. Exhale, come all the way down. Try and have the head in the center of the mat so that your spine is nice and long. Now with your bottom arm, can you push down into the floor so you are active. Your other hand, you can keep it as it is or you might like to stretch it out. So place it where it's helping you so you can gently twist and enjoy that stretch behind your shoulder blade. Reposition your top hand so it's right in front of you. Inhale, take the right arm back up to the sky. Exhale, release your arm down. Second side, inhale, left arm up. Exhale, thread the needle, bring your arm all the way under. Release your head down. Press yourself up, inhale, reach. Exhale, thread your arm under. Inhale, press up. This one we're going to stay and breathe in our thread the needle. Again, the bottom arm, your left arm, is pushing down. Your spine is nice and long. Feel free to reposition your right hand anywhere where you feel you can help yourself and you can turn. Getting a beautiful twist. 
stretching out the upper back around the shoulder blades. And then reposition your top hand so you can press yourself back up. Inhale, left hand up to the sky. Exhale, release your left hand down. Bring your knees together and then lie down onto your tummy. From here, now, when you're cycling and you're all the way in that forward position, holding onto the bars, it's really nice to give that front body a little bit of length. Draw the chest forwards with your arms. Can you press down and pull the elbows towards your body so that you are lengthening your spine out of your hips and lifting the chest forwards. We're gonna make this a dynamic movement to also work our core a little bit. Inhale. As you exhale, look down between your hands. Curl your hips, your thighs off the floor. Look towards your knees. So it's a little bit like a cat stretch, but you're on your forearms and you use. Come all the way back down and draw the chest forwards. Opening the chest, lengthen your spine. Inhale. Exhale, curling up. Try not to stick your bottom up. Keep your tailbone down. And come all the way back down into your Sphinx pose. And let's keep that going. Just maybe three more rounds. Good. Feel your center engage. And then enjoy that length as you draw the chest forwards. Try and consciously breathe. The breath will really support the movement and increase the benefits. Last one. And back into your Sphinx. Good. From here, lie yourself all the way down. I want to give our thighs a little stretch. Catch your right foot. Now, if catching your foot is not available, you could grab yourself a towel or belt, something to wrap around your foot and draw your foot in. Now, make sure that your knee is still directly underneath you and you're pressing your pubic bone down. We don't want to be having our bottom sticking out, so keep pressing your hips down. Hopefully, feel a nice stretch in the front of your thigh now. And then release your foot down. And do the same to the other side. You can rest your head down onto your other hand and just rest the top half of your body. Squeeze your bottom, press your hips down. Pubic bone is heavy. If you feel any strain in your lower spine, draw your tummy in a little bit more. And let go. Well done, just rock your hips a little bit. Good, from here, we're going to stretch our right arm right out to the side into like a T-shaped position, palm facing down. Turn your head to the left side, prop up your left fingertips in front of you. Now imagine your pencil, you're gonna roll onto your right side with that right arm still stretched out behind you. You might find that is just enough. It's a big stretch for your pecs, for the front of the shoulder. Again, remember when you're cycling, those muscles are working the whole time when you're holding onto the bar. From here, if you want extra, take your top leg and maybe reach it gently behind you. Good, but just go with what feels best for you, right? So we're all different. Be careful, never force anything. One more inhale. And exhale. Good, roll yourself back onto your tummy. Let's do the same on the other side. Take your left arm out to the side. 90 degree out to the side, turn your head to the right, prop yourself up, roll onto your left side. Good. If it's enough, stay right here. If you want a little extra, sweep the top leg back behind you. Try and continue to breathe deeply. Try and relax into that position as much as it's possible. One more in here. And one more exhale. Great. Roll yourself all the way back onto your tummy. And then bring your hands next to your chest. Let's push all the way up. 
and take a moment in child's pose. Sit back to your heels, release your head. You can have your arms in any position for a moment. Maybe giving your lower back a little rub with your hands. And stretch your arms out forwards again. Now lift the head up slightly. Walk your hands over to the right side. Your left hand comes over as well. Two choices here. Either keep your hands shorter distance apart or for extra stretch, place your left hand on your right hand. Depends a little bit how it feels for your shoulders. Release your head between your arms. Lean with your hips towards your left heel. Breathe into your left side. Now we're having a beautiful side stretch. And then walk your hands back to the center, lift up the head a little bit. Come over to your left side. Left hand on the diagonal. Right hand is either in line with the right shoulder or you cross your hand and place it on top. Head between your arms. Push the hips a little bit over to the right. Relax your head between your arms. Notice if one side feels perhaps a little tighter, stiffer. And come back to the center. From here, roll yourself all the way up into a high kneeling position. Place your hands onto your hips. From here, lengthen, lifting up, and then step your right foot forwards directly in front of you. Good. Make sure that your foot is in line with your hip, if not slightly to the right, and you can see your toes. From here, scoop your tailbone gently under, and then take a gentle, gentle, gentle lunge. We're just leaning a little bit down. Good. Good. Try and avoid sort of just sinking down into your joints, but stay up a little bit. Instead, press your back leg down, press your front foot down, and then think of your legs as if they're trying to squeeze together. Take a moment here. Inhale. Stretching out those hip flexors. Right? Hip flexors are working and are in a shortened position when you're cycling. From here, we'll bring the hands all the way down to the inside of your front foot. And now walk your right foot to the right side edge of the mat so that your toes are just pointing off the mat and your heel is still on the mat. Now we're coming into our lizard pose. And we're just going to let our hips sink down here. Good. Allow your right hip to gently open. Draw your chest forwards. Visualize your spine nice and long. Breathing here. Good. You can stay here if that feels enough for you. Or you can bring your right hand against your thigh and very gently turn the chest. And imagine you're leaning away from your right leg. It's a really nice hip opening, thighs, hamstrings, inner thighs. Nice stretch. Bring yourself all the way back facing forwards. And then walk your right foot slowly in, in line with your hip again. Let's take the right hand to the outside of your foot. From here, draw your hips back, dig your heel down. Good. Now, if you feel you need you with your hands to be slightly higher up, grab yourself some books, prop yourself up higher, right? Really useful just to use anything in your household or even some water bottles to put your hands on and then come forwards. And now we can let the hips sink down. And we'll come back. And we'll just draw the hips back. Don't worry if your leg doesn't go straight. Again, try and push the heel down and think of dragging the heel back. So whilst you're stretching your hamstrings, you are engaging them as well a little bit. And come forwards. And let's do one more, coming back. For those of you who are able to straighten your legs, keep digging the heel down and then you can start to lengthen your leg. Take a moment, stretch over that leg. Try and breathe as best as you can. One more inhale. And exhale. Great, rock yourself forwards. From here, shift your weight in between the back leg and your front foot. Lift yourself all the way up, hands towards your hips, and step your leg back. Place your hands onto the back of your pelvis. Think about moving the flesh 
down towards the floor and then open your chest, gently look up. Draw your tummy gently in and just be mindful not to collapse into your lower back and come all the way back up. Let's do the second leg. Inhale, grow nice and tall. Exhale, step your left foot forwards. Curl your tailbone under. Feel the front of the hips lifting. Lean slightly forwards. Press both your front foot and your back shin down into the floor and as if you're trying to drag them together make this position really active. I know when you look at me it looks like I'm not doing much but if you are pressing down and pulling your legs together you feel you're working in this position. Breathe in. Hopefully feeling a good stretch in the front of your thigh. Good. From here release your hands down. Wiggle your front foot towards the edge of the mat. Heel on the mat, toes pointing slightly out. Now allow your hips to sink down. Draw your chest forwards. This is called lizard pose. You can allow your front knee to gently open to the side. Maybe your foot is very slightly rolling onto the edge. And just allow yourself a gentle rocking motion if that helps you to release. Stay as it is, that feels good for you. Or place your left hand against your thigh. Turn your chest to the left and then as if you're leaning away from your leg. Breathe. One more inhale. Exhale, release it. Bring your leg all the way back to the center. And we're just going to draw back. Square your hips now. Dig your front heel down and rock forwards and draw back. Try and think about that left hip pulling back. Good, you can always give your leg a little rub and rock forwards. One more, draw back, lift up your toes if you can. Take a moment and stay here. Keep pressing that heel down and as if you're dragging your heel towards you. If it's available, you can straighten your knee. Breathing in. Hamstring stretch, so important to balance out the cycling so that you keep your lower back in a good, good way, healthy way. And then rock yourself forwards. Shift your weight again right between the two legs. Lift up your trunk, draw in your tummy and step your leg back. One more time, hands into the back of the pelvis. Lengthen the flesh down, pushing down, tailbone down. Lift up your chest, squeeze your elbows gently back. And then lift yourself up. Well done. From here, just a couple more things. Come down to sitting, opening your legs, maybe as wide as your mat is, and just windscreen wipe your legs side to side. Again, really nice for your hips. Go a few times, you can go faster, you can go slower, good. And then the next time your knees are pointing to the right side, we're going to swivel into this so-called 1990 sit. So we'll have our right shin parallel to one edge of the mat, your thigh is right in front of your hip, and then as much as it's available, the other leg in the same position. Always make sure that your knee is happy, right? Now, make sure that you don't start to drop off to the right side, so stay as central as you can. And then from here, with a nice tall spine, start to lean forwards until you hit some resistance. So hopefully something on your right hip, right outer thigh. Good, yes? Try not to hunch over, but keep your spine nice and long. It will really make all the difference for how you feel the stretch. Now, I like putting my hand into the sole of the foot as I come forward and I like pressing them into each other, right? But you can keep your hand on the side. Now, you might want to change a little bit the ankle of your trunk, so feel free to just try around. Where do you need to be to get the best stretch for you? Maybe a little to the other side, maybe right in the center. Hopefully, you get a good glute stretch. If this doesn't work for you, Lie on your back, 
cross your right ankle over your left thigh and do the thread the needle glute stretch, holding onto your leg. And then slowly lift yourself all the way up. So I'll just show you just in case. The lying down version is to cross and then to hold on to your leg. And that way you can stretch as well your glutes. Okay, let's come back. So let's do it again just a couple of times windscreen wiper legs. And then we'll stop on the other side. So do your other side. If you're doing your 1990 seat, try and be really precise with your leg position, having that 90 degree ankle, more or less 90 degree ankle with your back leg. Try not to go off to the side, stay nice and center. And then with a beautiful long spine, chest floating forwards, make your way forwards. Breathe here. Breathe out. Good. Remember, you can change the angle. Maybe you need to lean a little bit more to one side. Maybe you need to lean more to the other side. Let's give it a go. Have a little play here. Where is for you the position that gives you the best possible stretch? And then eventually you can always stay longer and pause me if you need to. Slowly come all the way up. Bring your legs out. Stretch your legs out. Just give your legs a nice little shake. Cross your legs over. Sit up nice and tall. Inhale, take a nice big stretch with your arms up. Exhale, draw your palms down. I hope you found this quick stretching routine useful and helpful. Of course, you can use this at any other activi activity, maybe after run or after hike, right? But specific for cycling, this would be really good. And I wish you a long time happy cycling. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to practicing with you again soon. Bye for now.